Well, we're very busy over here. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Sorry, sorry. Thanks for joining us. Let me just, uh, I'm literally rushing in the door. Hopefully the kids will be loud for a second while they all get in the house. Um, let me just change the chat options here to everyone as you guys. Thank you, sweet pie. Can you shut my door? Um, as you guys are joining and logging on tonight, you can let us know in the Hi, chat. Or tuning in from Sharon knows the drill. Sharon from Charlotte. Hey, Sharon from Charlotte. Hey, have you been plugging into some of the Greensboro stuff? Love you, Daddy. Love you, baby. Okay. Can you shut my door? Thank you, honey. Hi, Roxanne. So Lisa, Lisa's running kids around, doing meetings. I'm literally just got done at HBP and, and I'm in um I'm in um in Hamilton Township, New Jersey. We had nine guests here. They're still here, actually. You might even hear them downstairs. I'm actually at my new my new partner's home in his office to be with you guys tonight because it went, there were so many questions. And uh, I mean, a lot of new partners coming on. This December is just fire. I, I'm super excited. So you had um, how many? They had eight guests, I think. Nine, Hi, Alice. Not, nine guests. That's so awesome. When I posted in the team page, it was eight. One more came right after I did that, right when we were starting. Maybe so that nine. time is good. Um, like like right after work, so people don't get distracted. Yeah, we did a six. We did a six o'clock start, and then um, there's been a lot of questions. They're still asking questions, so it's been great. I just said I. I'll go upstairs and, and do things, but I'm excited to be with you guys tonight. So I guess, uh, are you, uh, streaming live on the Facebook group page? Yes. All of the things are settled. So we're good. All right. Well, hello to everybody. Um, and welcome. Do you want to do the, the opening and intro and then I'll take it from there. My beautiful yeah. bride. Yeah, sure. Welcome everyone to um, our, you know, weekly master unfranchise owner session here. Congratulations for being with us and for staying focused and staying the course. Um, we do have a quick little recognition that we want to do for some of the leaderboards. I actually have, I'm going to do a quick screen share because I want to show you, this is global, which is pretty cool, right? So play from the current slide. All right, so we've got some going on in Australia here. Um, Anne has a new personal sponsor, which is always exciting. Uh, some new BV, but we need to help Australia show the plan it looks like, right? Um, Canada has some good activity going on here. We got a few of, and these are just people who are participating. So this isn't the entire market, of course. Uh, these are just people who are signed up through the, um, you know, this stay focused, save the course challenge and people can join this at any time. So don't forget that. Okay. Um, so as you bring on new partners, they can always kind of, um, join in here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done Zoom. I'm a little, a little rusty here. I'm like, wait, where's all the buttons? Um, so for Hong Kong, we got some activity going on in Hong Kong. Um, going to keep clicking through here so we can get to our content. Malaysia. Malaysia's rocking and rolling, as you can see. So I don't know if we have anyone tuning in from any of these international markets. Some of them may catch the replay. Um, but certainly want to want to recognize everyone who is staying consistent because that's really important. Unfortunately, I can't read Mandarin. Lots of new sponsors in Market Taiwan, though. Um, UK is plugging along. And then in the US, let's just give some shout outs here. Um, wow, new BV sales, 1100. That's amazing. Look at Julie Lansedal up there. Anna Vidal, um, Alex Cummings is on there, Karen Roberts. Oh, look at Charlie and Peggy Bear, Cornelia, which by the way, Cornelia Stevens, she's a beauty advisor. She sold so far this year over $20,000 in custom blend. If you guys are in our motives group, you see she took a little screenshot of her 
um, sales board there, which is super cool. Um, Emily has two personal sponsors, uh, which is awesome for this week. Uh, Ronald Passen, Passion, I don't think I know Ronald. Um, Stephanie and Richard, Anna, Aubrey, we know Aubrey, Beth and Pitt Black, Chen Wei May, Don Cummings, Danae Williams, Kathleen and Michael Wallace, Lee, my girl Lee's on there, Nori, ah, sorry, I don't know what I did, <laughs> Penny, oh, shout out to Penny, um, so anyway, great to see people plugging away through the holidays, like Don said, it's still, you know, people are teeing themselves up for a new year, and, you know, I, I think a lot of people, at least the type of people we want to be aligned with, um, as they wrap up the year, it's, it's a great time for some reflection, right? And realizing like, am I where I want to be? What do I want next year to look like? And it's a great time to get a kickstart on your, um, on your goals. So, and it's a great time for customers looking at all the way on the right, new registered PCs. Melissa has 52. That's amazing. Emily's got 19. Anna has 18, 15 for Cornelia. Um, you know, you guys see all the, all the leaders there. So, um, if you're not retailing this time of year, you're missing out, you know, you do some fun sessions on gift giving for the holidays. We just did that for our team pouring this last Monday. So, um, anyway, I wanted to just kind of share that with you guys. Um, but tonight we're talking about, give me one minute, sweet pie. Um, okay. It's, I don't know, honey, go ahead. Tonight, we're talking about how to get a new partner started. Okay, so I'm going to see it over. To I'm going to take it over. So mute yourself out and I got this thing. As you guys can see, Hurricane Haley strikes again. That's Haley's name. That's our her little hurricane. And uh, she just uh, found the uh, clothes of the elf on the shelf. So we have another <laughs> dilemma happening at our house. I didn't know how to handle that. But anyway, uh, we, we'll, we'll figure that one out. But anyway. So yeah, um, for our topic, it's getting people started properly, right? And I actually like volunteered Don for this, um, like, I don't know, a couple months ago. And because um, I do think that you're one of the best at it for sure. And I think it's something that is super important because what you said in motion carries in motion, right? And, and people will like JR would always talk about the imprinting, right? Like it's one thing to say something and we have some great tools, which we'll probably touch on like getting started guide and things like that. But really the tools are just that it's like a tool to assist you, right? It doesn't replace what you're physically doing with somebody. So we're going to kind of go in, 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 order of importance, right? As far as getting someone started new with what the priorities are. Yep. There we go. So I'm going to keep this simple for you guys, because I think sometimes we overcomplicate the startup process and we try to fit too much in uh, and cram it on people and almost overwhelm people at times. I want to keep this simple for you. And I'm going to prioritize by order of importance what people should do when you get people started right, okay? Um, now, I will tell you, I, how many people are aware that are on here now? Just give me a, a, a one in the chat that people's success or failure is very, very conditional upon how you start them. How many people agree with that? Just give me a one in the chat. There we go. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The majority, the people's success is more related to how you start them than it is to what you they do after they get started because what how you start them is going to uh is going to set a standard by which they follow okay so we don't want to take any shortcuts but we want but we also only want to prioritize and talk about getting people started right in the things that make all the difference in the world the non-negotiables there are certain things from a major focus standpoint that people are going to focus on or not focus on. And that's OK if they want to be a part of this aspect of the business, but not this aspect. But there's other things that are essential. I want to know what they want. I want to know what they want out of the business. I want to find out what they want. So when I'm having my conversations and I'm getting people started, the first thing I want to do, by the way, before I even get to this point, is I want to have them understand the business, see the plan at least three times. I want to have them get people, start proving to me that they can get people to evaluate the product and evaluate the business. And then I'm comfortable bringing them in, right? If they can't show me that they have some progress, some, some ability to do those two things, I'm really hesitant to let them even come into the business, right? 
Um, unless, of course, they just want to be a wholesale customer. Okay, and that's that's an option. But nonetheless, that's number one. I want to get things in motion. I always think of this as a uh, the law of inertia kicks in. Things at rest tend to stay at rest, and things in motion tend to stay in motion. So if I some, show somebody a business and they love the business and they want to get started, but they have no motion yet, and I start them, they're at rest. Now I have to do something to put them in motion, right? But when I get people started, they, they, they see the business plan, they like the business plan, they're like, I think I want to get started. All right, no problem. Let's get you started right away, and let's get some action. Let's get some momentum here. So when you get started, you're immediately going to be in a position to start earning, right? And it's also a good way for you to see before you even start how this works. And also to me to see if you're coachable, because I, you know, I have a qualification process with people that I work with to make sure they're going to follow a little, you know, be coachable and follow a process because I know it's going to work, but I won't start anybody that I know won't follow the system because it won't work. Right. And I won't waste your time or mine. <clears throat> right. Like so that's that little conversation that I have up front is I want to get momentum. That's the first step is I want to get some momentum and motion happening before I even register them. Mm -hmm. Now, when they're ready to go, say they led to some people, you know, they at least proved they can lead to some people. They got a customer to potential. Maybe they have a partner or two ready to get started. Uh, last Monday, exactly two weeks ago and what, two days ago now, two, two, I have a guy that I, that, I, that I met with on Monday, met him back, showed him a plan all in person, showed him a plan on Wednesday challenged him to get me in front of some people. He had four guests in front of me on Saturday, came back, had three more guests at the UVP on Tuesday. One of which was another guest. And then the following, it was Thursday or Friday. No, the Friday, that Friday, they had eight more guests. And he was begging me to get started. And I was willing to bring him in. Why? Because he had people. He had one person ready to go. He's, I, he, spots, he got started on Saturday morning. He spots his first person Saturday afternoon. And that first person has somebody getting ready to start tomorrow. And he has his second activation, like, ready to go, like, because they're leading the people. Maybe even happened tonight with one of my partners, Carlos. I'm not really sure. So he may be activated less than three days into the business. Why? Because we got things in motion. So that's the first thing I want to do is get people started right with what to do. Second thing is when I go to register people, I want to know what they want. I understand that everybody's going to want the same out of this business as I do. So number two is I want to find out what they want. What do they want out of the business? So I'm going to have a conversation and I'm going to ask them before we get you started. I want to know where you're at and what you want out of this business. There's two ways you can come in as business. The first way you might come in and you want to come in as a wholesale customer, which you can buy the product that you need and maybe have a couple customers, but that's all you want out of the business. You're not looking to make any commissions. You just want to be a wholesale customer. By the way, I have people that have come in this way because they're a professional in the beauty industry or the health and wellness industry. They have no interest to build the business up front, but they want to have access to the product and are willing to what? lead the customers, do their form of thousands, do the minimum activities necessary to be a customer manager. And I'll let them come in on times, right? Right. But I need to find out if that's what they want. Because if that's what they want, I'm going to bring them on differently than I am someone who wants to make money in the compensation plan in the business. Okay. So I'm going to have this conversation, find out, meet them where they're at, Lisa calls it. I'm going to meet them where they're at. and I'm, but, but there's going to be some standards I'm going to have. So do you want to just get the product, sell it, make retail profit? right? And you're not interested in building the business at all and making commissions. That's one way to come in. Or you want to build the business and make commissions. Yeah. Cash I to echo that business. a little bit because, um, you know, I think we are in a lifestyle business, right? And so as you're living that lifestyle, there are going to be like we've many people, right? We hear the 80, 20 rule where 80% of your organization are going to be stable and waiting, meaning they love the product. They like the community, um, they're, they want to participate at their leisure, but they don't have any like really strong pressing goals. Um, and I know sometimes we feel like we should discount them because a lot of times when we're in, in trainings and, and, you know, we hear like go through the, the evaluation process and the ABC pattern. And absolutely we do all those things and you always strive to do those things no matter what, but if someone wants to live the lifestyle and convert spending into earning with product then, you know, I, I have a hard time saying no to that, right? So like you're saying, there's sort of two ways to go about a partnership or getting someone started. And a, a lot of that really just comes from a conversation that you're having 
And also you mentioned earlier, like understanding someone's why, I think that's super duper important because that may change over time, but really understanding someone's why is so important because as soon as they get a few no's or life gets in the way, or there's a distraction that comes up, this is going to be a really easy thing for them to sidebar because it's new and, you know, maybe they're not, no one's really where they want to be yet. Right. So I was under the impression that you wanted a vehicle to change that. Is that still the case? And, you know, and then like, let them like sit on that for a minute. Cause that doesn't feel yeah. good. Right. But sometimes we, we don't take time to get personal enough to understand that. And some of those conversations get uncomfortable and sometimes they get emotional. Also, we all need that reminder. We all need someone to kick us in the butt a little bit at times. But again, it's knowing like what their why is, where they're at so that you can be that coach when you need to be, or you can, you, you also on the flip side, if someone just wants to convert spending and earning and they want to live the lifestyle with products then you don't want to be selfishly putting your goals and like your sense of urgency on them and expecting them to produce when they were very clear with you that they're not at that point yet. Does that make, make sense to everybody? Um, yeah. You're also setting expectations too. So you're, you're letting them know what to expect based upon their commitment level. Right. And that's really what it's all about. We just lost you, Lise, So. I wonder if we lost her. Hopefully I'm still going. So anyway. Um, oh. No, no, I'm here. I just was handling an animal. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, I, I figured. I just wanted to make sure. But but yeah, so you're setting expectations. So if people come in and they just want to be a wholesale customer, they're not expecting to get activated and earn commission checks and get 12 and 12 and 24 and 24. You know, they're not expecting that. Nor, they, But you're also letting people know. And most people are going to say, yeah, I want to build the business. I want to create some royalty type income. I want to create, you know, our, our comp, you know, I want to I want to create the override that we have by building a team of people. And, and that's great. OK, great. Well, there are some absolute necessities that need to happen. They're the non-negotiables in order to make that happen and duplicate it properly. And I'm going to share those with you right now. So that's the second thing. So the first thing is get them started right by creating momentum before they're getting started. And then when they're ready to get started, I have that conversation. Which one of these unfranchised owners do you want to be? A wholesale customer that just wants to sell product? And, and not really build the business, right? And be involved in the compensation side of it whatsoever, but you want to make retail profit or do you want to build the business? And when they say, I want to build the business, okay, all right, now I'm going to talk to you about the non-negotiables of doing, making that happen. I call that my getting started seven, okay? It's just part of the process that I use and I'm going to share that with you guys right now. So number one is they need to know how to handle the business and they need to know that there's a system of training behind it and they must plug into the system. So the first thing I'm going to do before I even register them, as I'm selling them a ticket to the International Convention or Leadership School and a local seminar ticket, both in person. That's what I'm doing. Almost 100% of the time. Again, when, I'm, when am I not going to do that? For people that what? Don't, they're not interested in building the business. I'm not going to force this, force feed this down their thread. Now, I might have someone like that come in and still go to a local seminar if it's going to be a speaker that's speaking about like their topic because I do want to get them introduced to the business as much as possible or I might say hey come to the international convention or the leadership school so you can meet the vendors and meet the top executives from that that feature um, my goal is to get as many people to come to the events as possible because I want them to see the bigger picture even though that's not what they're looking for eventually but um, it's, a, it's an absolute necessity for people who want to build the business. Because as you guys all know, it's impossible to build a cash flow with this business, right? Something that's the system dependent if you're not plugging them into the system. So that's number one. I'm selling a ticket to the convention or leadership school, whichever the next corporate event is, and a, a local seminar ticket, both in person. That's the first thing. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the getting started guide. And I'm going to go through the, through the first two pages of the getting started guide. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to read the first two pages with them. I'm going to have them make the necessary commitments it takes. Let them understand, hey, it's a 12-month commitment. Um, you know, and, and, and they're going to go to an out-of-state training, all those things on the first two pages. I'm going to recommend them to go through the rest of the getting started guide. And we'll do that over the next 90 days. But I'm going to go through the first two pages of the getting started guide. A little tip, by the way, when you're doing this. Sometimes people ask, do I, why do I have to go to a training? And a lot of times analogies work really, really well here. 
Um, and and you're, you're not going to be able to explain every single reason why they have to go. You just have to make this almost like a habit and an expectation. It's just what we do. It, I always say this is not an a la carte menu. If you want to make money in the business, the things I'm sharing with you, these seven things are necessities, right? They're not hard. They are work, but they're absolutely worth it because the results will speak for themselves. If they, if they, if they fit, uh, fight back at all about the tickets, just say, listen, I want to give you the best analogy I can. I'm selling, I'm, I'm selling you to, to buy a vehicle right now that can get you anywhere you want. And fast, oftentimes it's a thousand horsepower engine in this, en in this vehicle. And it can take you anywhere you want. There's one challenge. It doesn't come with a steering wheel. And you need to go to the trainings and that's where you get the steering wheel. That's where you get learn. That's how you learn how to steer and drive the car. Now, if you get into a vehicle that doesn't have a steering wheel, or you don't know how to drive it. There's a certain way, a certain other way to drive it. That's different than what you're used to driving something in. And you get in, start it up and hit the gas and you don't know how to steer it. What's going to eventually happen? You're going to crash. I'm just envisioning the Flintstones. Like people, that's what people do. They try. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Crash. But there's no steering wheel. Yeah. So they're, they start running, but then they don't know right. how to steer it. And they, eventually you're going you to crash. You want to be the Flintstones or not? No. Yeah. That's right. right. But that's the case. So <laughs> use that analogy with people. Or listen, if you're going to buy a, 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 a what's what's more important, if you want to learn how to play golf competitively, because we want to be competitive in this business to win. If you want to learn how to play golf competitively and you buy a pair of golf clubs, but you never learn how to hold them and swing them, you're, we're setting you up for failure. Mm -hmm. I want you to get the lessons first. The golf clubs are that's not as important as the lessons are knowing how to use the tool versus getting the tool. So that's the second thing I, that's the first thing I do is I make sure they commit to the training. And then the second thing is I go through the first two pages of the getting started guide. By Number the way, like people want to be in business with people who like have posture and confidence. So when you yeah. come at them, like, listen, this is a non-negotiable you may as well not even partner because I'm setting you up for failure and I don't need the bad rap and you don't need to waste your time and money. Right. So um, it's that important, but usually when you have that type of swagger or that posture, they don't, you know, once you overcome the objection, then they get it. Um, and I, especially and if I, it comes from the heart, like, especially right. if it's coming from the heart, like I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste mine, but more importantly, I'll say that, but more importantly, I want to make sure you get out of this, what you want. And mm -hmm. I will not set you up for failure. These things are necessary. You might not understand it all, but you need to have some blind faith. You need to trust the process. Can mm -hmm. I ask, can I get your commitment to trust the process with me right now and just follow my lead? Yeah. And that's the easy questions that you can do. And the, the majority of the time they'll do it. And I will tell you right now, sometimes they won't. And I will tell you, I walk away from those meetings. And sometimes, I, m most of the time, I won't register them. Mm -hmm. I'll say, let's get you, right now, you need a little bit more information and training before we get you started. I don't want to, I think you're missing something. Because if there's hesitation here, I, I have caution. I don't want, I don't want to set you up for failure. Let's get back. Let's, let's get you to go to a, let's get you to come back, see the plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I highly encourage you guys, yeah, to, or at least get them to lead the more people and to which those people will do what it takes. So that's number two. Is the on people who are, who like self-development, then right. like, right. this is a, a no brainer for them. They get it. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, in, in all the years of building the business right now, I think people, I feel as though people are more open to attending trainings because they want to they want to belong to something. They want some purpose. They want to be together again. Like, so it's a um, community. It's a community. It's a community. Yeah. yeah. So I think you, I think many of you, maybe you guys are already doing this, but for those of you that maybe this is new to, or you need to kind of retrain your brain to, to have this process again with new partners, um, don't expect people to give a lot of pushback on it because I think you'd be um, enlightened by how many people look forward to the invitation and they want to grow and they want to learn and they want to meet new people. And they want to follow someone who knows what they're talking, has posture to do it, and they know they're coming from the heart. And they also don't want get rich quick because they know there's no such thing. They want to know that there's work involved. And that actually gives it credibility when they know there's work and, and a commitment and a sacrifice that's necessary too. Never underestimate that. So again, that's number two is the getting started guide. So number one is the tickets. Number two is the getting started guide. This is before I even register them, by the way. Number two is the getting started. Number three, I'm going to grab out the home shopping list. And we're going to go through the home shopping list and check off the things they know they're going to buy anyway. 
I'm going to show them psychologically that, hey, you're going to spend this money anyway. So number three is a home shopping list. Now, after I'm done that, that's when I'm ready to register them. And I go through the registration process online, right? And I register them on the system. All right, that's, that, that's next, now, which would be number four would be register. Now, number five would be, which I didn't even have in the system. It's just that, that the registration is right there, right after we do the preliminary things. We have the discussion, we find out what they want. We get their tickets in their hand. We review the getting the first two pages of the getting started guide and um, and go through the home shopping list so they can see what they try to use. Because some people might start by buying a kit, guys, but other people might choose and select themselves two, three, four, five, six hundred BV because they want to buy it. Does that make sense? They want the access to the product anyway. Um, yeah, so, I, um, I, more than, I would say more than 50 percent of my meeting, my, my re registrations right now are not fast start kits. Right. They aren't because I, Pete, I, I also think it's a good time to get some extra training and product in their face. And then people are getting a box of stuff that they sit and they don't want to use it all. And then they think it costs them money. I, I prefer, it doesn't matter whatever they prefer, but I personally prefer that them pick and choose a product that they want because it gives me extra time to get them to learn about the product. They're buying the stuff that they chose. They feel like they selected it. Right. So therefore they have more chance to use it. You know, I, that's just my, me personally. And that's well, how I, I know you and I have talked about this before. And maybe some of you tuning in have had this experience. Like before we had fast start kits, um, it was like fun to sit down and go through a catalog and go through a home shopping yeah. list. And people looked forward to it. It was like the, shopping for themselves. Like they picked out what they wanted. And yes, the fast start kits are more economical. Um, but I think there was some dilution in, in new partners or people or mm -hmm. unfranchised owners knowing all the brands we have and the products that we have and converting their household spending into earnings. Because all they were doing is like, churning and burning with fast start kits and they weren't really opening their mind to all the other products that we have. So I would start there. You can always skinny down and simplify to a fast start kit, but I think it's great to start with a home shopping list with someone have them, and then say, Hey, you're going to spend this money in the next 30 to 90 days anyway for your household. So it's an, a more of an upfront investment right now at this moment, but you would be spending it anyway. And even if they back out of it and they don't get started with all that product, um, they have an awareness, right? So yeah, again, right. maybe maybe you all are using that and doing this. I don't really know, but just in the event that you're not, maybe that'll be a game changer for you. It's smart. Um, and, and this is very simple. And I do this every single time with each person. I sell yeah. on their ticket. I go through the first two pages of getting started guide and then recommend them to go through more and we can review that more together. Um, I, um, I, I, um, I, 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 I do the home shopping list with them and then we register them based upon either a kid or their home shop list. And I, I just show them the differences and they can decide from a financial standpoint which way they want to go, right? And then I register them. Next thing, right, after registration is I am going to, I'm, I'm going to show them their website, of course, which is part of the register. But then I'm going to schedule their launch events. I'm going to schedule launch events in their homes. Now, it could be one-on-ones in their homes. Or it could be a group event. You have to use your litmus test as to what they're comfortable with. Some people won't be comfortable with a big group event. Most are, but every once in a while, you won't have some. Some people, you're going to have to go see one-on-one or two-on-one -on -one with them, I mean, and other people are going to do group events. That's up to them. I want to be in homes with groups as much as possible, but every once in a while, you're going to come across people that won't be comfortable doing something in their home, and you're going to have to go do a group of like a 10 two-on-ones instead of one event or two events that have five or 10 guests, if that makes sense. You have to figure that out. And that's the next thing. I'm scheduling that right away, right after I register them, because I want to get them started fast. So that would be number, I guess, four, if you don't count the registration or five, if you count registration as a step. Okay. Next one, right? So that's scheduling their launch events. Next one, right, is I'm going to fill their calendar. I'm going to fill their calendar and let them know. So number five is fill their calendar and let them know how to plug into the GMTSS properly. Now they got their tickets to the local, so I'm definitely put the local in there, but I'm also going to let them know about the UBPs, the two UBPs per month is what my preference is. I want people to attend at least two live UBPs per month. Um, and I'm going to fill their calendar with their HBP, right? Their, their business launch event, their product launch event, the local seminar that's in the ticket, that's on the ticket, the, the convention that's on the ticket, and then anything else that's in the area that I want them to plug into. Be cautious to not overwhelm them too much with stuff here. Guys, remember, 
They haven't been to anything yet, maybe. Now, if they have, you can put more in, but you you gotta meet, you gotta really. This is a, remember how you started. You weren't like 110% the day you heard about this. You evolved into that by attending events and seeing more things. So just be cautious that you don't overwhelm people because you, you know, you, you know, just be do it. You know, you can sense it when you're with them. It's very, very important. So, but fill their calendar with the GM upcoming GMTSS best events. And, and just let them know what the minimum kind of uh, plugging into the system is two UVPs per month and one local seminar per quarter and one certified training per quarter or some standardized training per quarter. That's less than three days a month that people have to actually physically show up. Um, but that's a fully functioning GMTSS system in an area. Now, if your area doesn't have that, talk to somebody to help you get that restarted in your area. That's a little side note. So that's that. That is filling the schedule. And then the last two things, right? Number That was number five is filling account. Number six. Have them set a goal statement and get a goal statement down within the next 24 to 48 hours after you register them. You need them to have a goal statement. If they haven't already done that yet, they might have it, but get a goal statement written so you are aware of what they want out of this business, right? And why they want it, right? Um, it's also going to remind them why they're going to keep going through the process during the ups and downs of building the business because sometimes people are going to be positive, sometimes they're going to be negative. Get them to write a goal statement and maybe even a vision board and dream board. Um, and, and then that's the fuel. That's what's going to keep them going when things get tough sometimes. That, that, the, the fire of not getting that is going to keep them going um, through the ups and downs that, that happen along with attending the events. And then the last thing is we're going to write them an action plan. We're going to design based upon their goal statements, what they want, when they want it, and have a detailed plan to get there. We're going to write them an action plan. We're going to sit down and write them an action plan on what they have to do. And we're going to reverse engineer. And if you don't know how to do this, talk to a senior partner and have them do it with you the first couple of times. But when you find out what people want and when they want it by, you can reverse engineer an action plan on what they have to do each month, each week, and each day to guarantee the result. And then they know what they have to do based upon specifically what they want out of that action plan. And that's it. That's how I get people started right. There's a lot of other things that people may do, but I'm just going to tell you something. Don't go too much. Don't get too crazy about it, okay? Keep it simple. So let me just repeat uh, how this is moving forward. And again, you'll find your way. You'll find your path here. But get momentum started. Then have the, when they're ready to get started, you know, get some momentum beforehand with the trial run mechanism. When they're ready to get started, have that discussion. Do you want to be a customer? Yes, and have fun for sure. And all this is fun if you do it right. When you're getting results, it's fun, by the way. Winning is fun. Helping people succeed is fun, right? But unless you do that, you get them start, have that conversation. You want to be a customer. You want to make, be successful in the business. If they want to be successful in the business, there's minimum commitments and non-negotiables that they have to happen. And that, so the first thing is they got to get trained and plug into the system and make sure everybody does that. Number one. Number two, go through the first two pages of the getting started guide. Number three, use a home shopping list to decide what they want to get started with in the business or just decide if they're going to buy a fast start kit. Number three. Number four, we're going to register them. Number five, well, we're going to register them after number three. Then after we register them on the back office, number four is we're going to schedule their launch events for pro a product launch and a business launch. That's number four. Number five, we're going to fill their calendar with the minimum commitments of the GMT. Assess what they expect so they can plug into it, support it, be supportive of it, but also bring their people to it. Understand, tell them that's a tool that's helping them grow. Number six, we're going to have them establish their goal statement so we know why they're doing the business. And then number seven, we're going to write an action plan. Now, we're not going to do that action plan right away. We're going to have them write their goals because we can't write their action plan until we see their full goal statement. We're going to help them with the goal statement over the next time or two we meet. Then we'll write their action plan after that. And that gets them everything that they need to do moving forward to grow. And then as they build more confidence and more, and they get involved with the company more, you can fill in all the gaps in between there. But if you do those things, you're setting people up right. And man, you have you just increase their chances of success exponentially. Mm -hmm. And one detail on like when you're registering them, do that in person if and when possible. Yes. Um, I think that that's really important. Not that we've never done like an, a sign up this way on Zoom, but like treat it like a business partnership. It's a big deal. Just because it's affordable and accessible to the average person doesn't mean that it shouldn't be celebrated. Um, so, you know, make sure you're putting ample time aside, make sure you're, you're being professional about it and setting them up for success by doing all of these things. But we are in a relationship business, right? So, um, there's no one else on the camera, baby. 
So anyway, um, well, it, in the spirit of keeping it simple, I guess we should we should wrap it up. Um, I guess so. Hurricane Haley's back. But so guys, um, let me just wrap up by saying this. Get guidance from your senior partners. Get guidance from your senior partners with this stuff. It's not hard and complicated, but if you shortcut this stuff and you leave some of this stuff out there, there's missing pieces. And if it's missing with your people, they're going to duplicate the missing piece. And then you're going to have people that don't start right. And then it falls back on you because it was on you to start them right and have the posture and confidence to make sure they do the things that's necessary in order to be successful. So I want to wish you all a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We all love Hurricane Haley for sure, um, but she is crazy. And um, she she's my little, she's my spirit animal. There she is. She's back again. Um, but I challenge each all, each one of you to read, listen through this a few times, make the commitment and make 2023 the year you finally make your dreams come true and eliminate all your own personal excuses. And we thank you guys for being here. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>